Hello and welcome to everybody. In this sixth session, we will focus on the environment provided for kids by the parents. Since environment is a vast subject, we will look at the what in this video and the more descriptive how in a later video. Kids primarily need a thriving environment to well, thrive, and have proper nurture and all-round development. A thriving environment means allowing the maximum possible latitude that you as a parent can allow for studies, physical playtime, sports, practical learning, activities, and chores. Note that screen time is deliberately excluded since in this digital age, schools use digital resources, parents give in, and kids demand based on peer pressure. In my opinion, TV is rightly called the idiot box and passive watching is, well, passive, does nothing for brain development but on the contrary has extreme long-term negative effects. Ditto or more destructive and addictive are video games involving no physical activity. Being a couch potato and moving thumbs doesn't an exercise make it. Parents need a lot of patience to do the following. Be good teachers of good culture, habits and manners, and being role models. See earlier culture and role model videos. Since kids are well kids and not adults, they require a lot of repetition, reiteration, hand holding, leeway, etc. Be it putting them to bed, teaching them to eat, clean themselves, or any of the everyday survival tasks and basic life skills. Allow them to run around, respond to their questions, enable optimum development, motor skills, and so on. See Infants 0 to 2 video. Fill in the gaps prior to school education by teaching, encouraging, and allowing all round development, playground activities, and so on. See the upcoming Toddlers 2 to 4 video. Respond to incessant questions demands for logical reasons, respond to activities with direct participation, appropriate praise or encouragement, and so on. If there are two or more kids, it is easier for them to keep themselves entertained. With one kid and with the nuclear families, it is very demanding environment for parents to pay attention. Until just a few decades ago, the number of siblings, cousins, and relatives were far larger with not much bother for parents. Be good teachers to effectively and practically teach to especially fill in the gaps of school education. Under decent clean living, obvious items like good clean home, wholesome food, clothing, accessories, transportation, etc. do not need elaboration since most parents normally provide adequately. It is important to not give in to peer pressure to match up to others. Kids need to learn to live and appreciate the environment you as parents can afford to provide. Be generous with love, except to be careful to keep in check over doting. Same with caring, you have to empathize and provide adequate care, but be wary of overindulgence. There is a line between discipline and non-deliberate and or unintentional abuse. Deliberate abuse and abuse due to anger management issues, substance usage, etc. are not in scope since they are medical issues. People cannot be happy all the time, nor can kids be kept always happy. Some kids' wants are almost endless. In general, parents should try and provide a happy environment for the kids to grow in. If one parent is yelling, the other should be able to provide the required emotional support. Kids need to be able to confide their fears, worries, joy, needs, and other emotions with you, the parent, who is their biggest support. You as parent and mature adult should encourage openness and hopefully remain their confidant in spite of friends. Constant apathy, discouragement by being too judgmental, etc. can shut them down to where they may find other often dangerous outlets. Keep in mind that parents are usually the most unselfish since they always wish well for their kids. Others, including close friends, move on and or may have their own hidden agendas. 
Intervention is a very important topic that involves the following. Where do you as a parent draw the line on discipline? Parents need to constantly draw and redraw lines of discipline. Appropriate guidance is required at regular intervals to channelize kids' energy positively toward progress and to create wholesome personalities. Knowing when to teach what based on various factors like age, maturity, etc. Parents are gurus and guides throughout the lives of kids. Also see the role model video. What aspects of kids' actions, comma, activities should be regulated? This is very subjective since it depends on maturity of the kid, the responsibilities that they can manage, their age, gender, and other factors. Kids have problems almost every day, and it takes courage to calmly deal with the issues. Especially when they have bruises, staying calm provides kids with the necessary and a much-needed soothing environment. On many items or issues, parents need to be firm and not give in to all their demands. Judge, anybody with multiple kids knows that more likely kids are like chalk and cheese. They constantly fight, get together, bicker at the drop of a hat, and love and support each other the next instant. You as a parent need to be patient and more importantly, fair. I like to often remind my kids that eat well, sleep well, study well, and play well is all they need to focus on. Eating involves healthy, wholesome food, more vegetables and fruits, milk, lots of water, etc. Early to bed and early to rise with adequate sleep is important. Studies and physical activities help brain and body development respectively. We as parents owe our kids an environment conducive to these basic aspects. Hark back to your childhood to try and remember what negative and positive memories you have of your growing up environment. If you remember a non-celebration of a birthday, but not the denial of a candy or mild spankings, very likely that your kids will have similar memories. Your parents are a good resource if you have forgotten parts of your childhood. Hence, the environment you provide your kids is extremely important and equally subjective apart from a few generally accepted good environmental items. Every parent typically wishes a better environment for their kids than their own. Your intention may be fully energetic and benign, but totally at odds with the kids and even spouse's perception. Ultimately, long-term perception is what sticks in their memories. A few items may have to be quote-unquote forced on kids for their greater long-term good. Personally, I like to mildly push my elder one to play games at times, though the inclination is more towards art. So adapt accordingly and happy parenting. A few videos later, we will discuss the how of environment. In the next video, we will talk about toddlers slash kids 2 to 4. With that, I would like to sign off and we will meet again sometime next month. Thank you.